guys, how are we doing? Welcome to a, another video. We've got the Audi just behind me. The Audi passed its MOT today. Oh, and thanks for all the comments on the uh, previous video as well about the Audi. Um, loads of people comment in with ideas and suggestions. And a lot of people were saying things like glow plugs, fuel filter. Um, that's what I thought first as well. That's, they've been changed. Um, that made no difference. Right, so welcome to um, the, the place with no name. They're, they've not really called it anything yet. We'll just call it the car. Someone said Autobahn, actually. That was a good one. Autobahn, I like that. Maybe Autobahn for now, and then we'll see how we feel when we get the Integra here. Because, you know, working on a JDM car, call it the Autobahn's a bit. This evening I want to do a test on the car. I want to jack the front end up, leave it for a few minutes, and then see how it starts. Because I've always felt like it's been a bit harder to start when it's, when it's at an incline, but I've never actually tested it. Firstly though, when we were coming back from Driftland, I hit a piece of wood on the motorway. And it's fucked these two wheels, look. Look at that, this one's actually leaking air. This one's still airtight, but this one's leaking air. And uh, yeah, pretty savage, pretty savage dint on both my rondels, my uh, both left side. Now I was pretty tempted to spend, you know, a couple hundred quid, whatever, and, and buy some nice posh fancy wheels for the front of it, but at the end of the day, you know, it's a, it's a drift car and that money needs to really stay for the Integra because I've got a lot of stuff to buy for the Integra. Um, so I think I'm just going to use these wheels, maybe spray them up first or something and get some 235 tyres on there because I don't think that looks bad at all, it's a classic E36 isn't it, I mean, I mean those wheels on and yeah, it looks alright, it's good enough for me. So yeah, these M3 reps are a lot higher offset and they're skinnier than the uh, rondels that were on there. The rondels that were on it, they were 8.5 JET15 and uh, with the E46 lower arms that I've got, as you can see they've been making a mess of my lovely fiberglass arches. That's just what happens when you uh, use your car properly or your wheels don't fit properly, one or the other. But yeah, it's not good. So I want to try and stop that getting much worse and at the same time get some grip on the front. That's why I'm going for a skinnier wheel with a, a higher offset and uh, hopefully it should be better and easier on the arches. Obviously the lock doesn't help either when I'm at full lock and uh, you know getting full compression and stuff on the shocks. Um, yeah, I'd, I know it's a drift car and I shouldn't really care, but that's uh, that's not really nice, is it? So that's another reason for why I want to change the front wheels. And I think I think I'm just going to do this because you know I've already got those wheels. It'd be a shame to waste them, and then I can just use the front wheels that were on there. I just use them as skid rims on the back. So whenever I've noticed that it's been a bit of a pain to start when it's been parked up, it's always been for a few hours. So maybe my little test isn't going to work. I'm just going to. Leave it for a bit longer and then um, we'll see. Let's see if I can find something else to do. I uh, changed the bushes in the rear trailer now the other day. You can see we've got ball joints here now. See them, lovely things. Both sides. Um, it was good, it was good, easy to do. I did it, you know, I didn't film anything when I was doing it. But when I do the other side, which I'll be doing on the car, I, uh, I might make a little, not a tutorial. Just to make clear these garage videos that I'm gonna be doing. Don't use them as tutorials. I'm just someone that likes to play with cars. I'm not, I'm not a mechanic. I've said it enough times. Um, you might see me doing daft stuff, and you think, "What the fuck are you doing that for?" It's because I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just, just having fun and playing. But yeah, these ball joints. I bought the tool to do them. Bought, I bought a tool to do them properly, and uh, yeah, it made the job so easy. And um, pretty confident now that I can do these in situ on the other side on the car. So I think I probably will video that. But it's not a tutorial. But yeah, these bushes, I couldn't find a video on eBay of anyone doing these bushes. You get a lot of people doing this bush, the front uh, trailing arm bush on the back, but these actual hub bushes, which are now ball joints, they're not bushes, just to, to make it clear, they, this one was a bush, no, this one was a bush, but now they're both ball joints. That's what the uh, M3 uses from factory, and if it's good enough for the M3, it's good enough for me. Right, so we've probably not got enough time to do the test that I want to do, but if I could leave it like that all night I would, but I can't, I need to drive it home. So I'm going to drop it down and I'll have a look at the back of the engine, have a look at this tandem pump, see if we can see any physical signs of any diesel leaking or anything like that, because if diesel can come out then air can get in, right, so let's have a look. Right, so what I want to do now is, is look into the tandem pump. The tandem pump is called so because it does two things, it does vacuum and fuel on these cars, run off the back of the camshaft at the back of the engine. If you've watched any of my old, old vlogs from 
from way back when. I actually did a video when I was changing this tandem pump down at Stretton. It doesn't feel like that long ago, but I reckon it probably was. Uh, I was definitely filming on a GoPro then as well, so we didn't have any of this fancy setup. But the tandem pump is right back there. And I've changed it once before, but of course the car's had a replacement cylinder head since then. So, I don't know, maybe the gaskets failed. I don't, I don't know, I don't know. We need to have a look and see. I just remembered someone suggested checking the uh, battery terminals and the, and the earths and stuff off the battery. Um, I had the battery out the other night and I checked all that because uh, I read that online as well that apparently the battery connections can get a bit weak but um, that should attach better than what it does. Uh, they're all fine the terminals, the battery seems good, I can't fault the battery at all. The starter motor is such a pain in the ass to get to it so it's right underneath the turbo and it's like I really don't want to try and change that starter motor. <laughs> Hopefully we can uh, find the problem and it's not the start motor because... Well obviously it's not the start motor because it cut out as I was driving today. It's fuel! It's got to be fuel, right? It's fuel! Okay guys, I've been looking into this, uh, this issue for a couple of minutes now. Um, I found quite a lot of oil down the back of the engine. I'm not sure if it's oil or diesel and it's kind of where the tandem pump is. Um, but I did leak a lot of diesel uh, before when I did have the tandem pump problem, so I don't know if it's residue from that, but I mean that was a, that was a long time ago, so I don't know if you can stay there for that long, but long story short, there's a lot of shit down the back of the engine. I can't find any leaks though, I can't find any kind of traces of diesel coming out of either the tandem pump or any of the pipes. Um, around, the, um, around the tandem pump itself where it attaches to the cylinder head, everything seems pretty dry, so you know, there's, there's definitely stuff below it, but kind of in the area of where the actual pump is, I can't, I can't find anything. Uh, so, rather than just leave this as an unsuccessful night and a pointless video, I'm going to try a little, a little bodge. Um, you know, I like bodging things, right? Now this is a, a non-return valve, and it's, uh, the, the fuel system should have one of these on standard anyway, you know, it, sh it should already have this, but if I fit it kind of further forward, I'm going to fit it right on these lines here. If there is air getting into the system, hopefully this will uh, prevent it, bodge it, fix it. I don't know, one of those three things hopefully might happen, or it might just fuck it. And then I'm going to put this on the line that comes in from the tank and goes down towards the fuel filler. Uh, I'm going to use these pipes here just at the top of the firewall, because they're uh, easiest to get to and if it ends up, you know, breaking things, I can I can replace it. I did buy some fuel hose as well. I bought some fuel hose, and I was going to redo all the fuel hoses here, from the, uh, the firewall hard pipes uh, into the fuel filter and then into the tandem pump. I was going to redo all them, but guess who forgot to bring them with him? It's me. But I forget. I remember the bodge piece, of course, the important bodge. I remembered that, so I'm just going to hack it on, and I guess we'll see in the morning if it works. No fuel coming out of this. No wonder it don't fucking start. Right guys, that's it. Bodge valve is in. Right guys, that's it. My phone on the floor. I'm having to hold uh, my phone look to brighten my face up. Otherwise, it goes a bit dark. And a bit gloomy looking, which obviously suits my voice a bit. So, the car's done. Um, let's see if it starts. It's a fun game, me and the Audi we've got at the minute. We, uh, we like to play tricks on each other. I look on piston heads at E39s and then the car doesn't start. It's great. Okay, there we go, the car starts up, so it's obviously fine. We're gonna have no issues in the future whatsoever, the car's fixed, awesome. Shout out to the four pound non-return valve that I just fitted. I bet mechanics that watch this, I bet there are some mechanics out there watching this thinking, what the fuck is he doing? Why is he doing that? I know that's not a fix by any means, it's just a bod, it's a, it's a workaround, we'll go with workaround. I call the video there, hope you've enjoyed watching me uh, piss about with the Audi some more. Hopefully we'll get to the bottom of these issues sooner or later. Um, I'm going to come up at the weekend and I'm going to finish off those trailer rounds on the E36. So I might make the uh, video on the bush that I talked about. We'll have to get the arm on, on this side first and then we'll switch the car around. So we've got better lighting and then we'll, we'll, we'll have a go at that I think. So yeah, next video will probably be E36 and I'll give you an update on how the Audi's getting along as well. Right, so I'll uh, see you next time. JDM gloves. <laughs>